Welcome to The Last Resort Sugar Detox. This is a free online course to walk you through your sugar detox and teach you about sugar addiction. More importantly, it will teach you how to make sugar freedom a lifestyle and not the same old yo-yo diet. Make sure you download the free book below as it corresponds with the videos and you can follow along. If you found us somewhere in the middle of the video series, don't forget to go back to video number one and watch the whole series and subscribe for weekly updates. Now grab your free course guide by clicking the link below in the show notes. Here's your next video. Welcome back. As you can see, I took a little bit of a break. It was uh, getting overwhelming there, changed my clothes. Actually, it's another day, I'll be honest with you. But uh, here's uh, where, what we're gonna go over today is we're gonna go over withdrawals. Uh, and I think I stopped the last time on this section because it's just, withdrawals is very real and I think a lot of people out there know that and they're a little bit uh, afraid of them to be honest with you and, and they're rightfully rightfully so they need to be afraid of them because the withdrawals for sugar are very very real and you don't want to go into it not knowing what you're up against if you will and I'm going to not sugarcoat it here I hope that's okay with you I'm not going to like say it's easy and, and you know walk in the park kind of stuff because it isn't it's, it's difficult and it's physical and it's real and I want to uh, you know I want to prepare you for it so I'm going to read for you a quick uh, uh, a quick list so excuse me looking away from the camera for a second but I'm going to read you a list here of some of the withdrawals from flour and sugar, okay? Sugar and flour. Now remember, we've kind of gone over the flour thing. Hopefully that's not a problem for you. Um, but if you want to start with just sugar, you're probably going to almost have to do it again. You don't want to do that. So let's do both at the same time. All right, a few of the withdrawal symptoms, the physical withdrawal symptoms include hunger. Now this is not real hunger. This is kind of an emotional hunger, but it will manifest itself I think I covered it on the, a few more videos back where hunger is not really hunger. It's your stomach's not going to growl. Your stomach's going to growl at first, the first time through, but after that it'll go away. That is actually a, a, a sugar withdrawal uh, symptom. So a headache, you're going to have a headache. Uh, not, not everyone has a headache now. Uh, some people have a throbbing, painful headache. You know, it's almost like your brain is sloshing around in your head there. So be careful. This is going to be a time period, and we're going to go over it in just a second, um, uh, that you're going to need a lot of rest. You're going to need, a time, you know, you're going to, need to budget time for resting. Uh, you're going to have a little bit faster heartbeat. Uh, lethargy, low energy. You're going to be tired all the time. Uh, let me just go through this, and then we'll come back. Mood swings, you're going to, believe me, mood swings, you're going to be happy one minute and angry and sad the next. This, this, Emotional roller coaster will rear its ugly head. Anger, you're going to be angry, angrier, maybe angry at for no reason. There's going to be some anxiety. There's going to be some depression, but the depression is not like you have a mental issue, if you will. This is going to be a physical depression because your dopamine receptors are resting, they're healing, and they're not, you know, and, and they're not being pushed. They're not being um, uh, manipulated is the right word. They're not being manipulated by sugar, so they're resting at this point in time. So there's going to be some physical depression. Uh, sadness or grief over the loss of the substance. You know, it, it's been our friend for many years, our lover. Our, you know, it's been a, a comfort for many years. Uh, di di digestive stuff, uh, diarrhea, cramps, whatever. Insomnia. Uh, and there's going to be cold or flu-like symptoms like runny, runny nose, uh, watery eyes, uh, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, so it, it's not the flu. It really genuinely is not the flu. Uh, again, the anxiety is heightened. And you may feel very weepy or emotional for a time. Okay, You may feel, again, this emotional roller coaster that you use sugar to help uh, man you use sugar to manage emotions for many years is now really coming time to pay the piper. You've got to learn other methods. You've got to learn how to take a walk, 
do yoga, meditate, call a friend, go for a walk, whatever it is, you've got to learn new coping mechanisms for dealing with your emotions. Um, and it's, it's an important part. So hold on one second here. Uh, and it also, it also depends uh, how long you've been using and how heavy your habit is, okay? Those with lighter habits are going to have lighter withdrawals. People that are really sugar junkies, excuse the term, because I consider myself one, a sugar junkie or addicted to sugar. Uh, if, you're, if that's you, then the, the, it's, I hate to tell you this, gang, but your body is gonna feel like a train wreck. It's gonna, the, it's gonna be the worst flu in the world. Now, honestly, I personally believe that the flu itself, although there is a little bug they call the flu or whatever, is kind of your body resting from massive sugar and flour withdrawals at different times of the year. Uh, and you don't, you know, you don't eat as much and what have you. So, but that's another story. We'll get into that some other day. Why is all this so hard? Okay. Why not wake up one day? Everybody's done it. They quit for a week or a month or whatever, lost a few pounds. Why is this so difficult? one simple reason and we're talking about it it's withdrawals sugar cravings and people label it sugar cravings like your stomach says you got to have it your brain says you got to have it it feels like your taste buds says you got to have say you have to have it what it truly is is sugar withdrawals it's your body fighting to get the the, the, the substance re-ingested into it okay that's all it is no other reason okay now I'm going to throw a little bit of a curveball at you, okay? This is going to be, <laughs> you're, going to, you're going to say, this guy's crazy. Why would I want to do this? Well, it's not that you're going to want to do this. It's going to happen anyway for 90% of the people. I would guess over the hundreds of people that I've helped quit sugar, only 10% either read my book or take the course and then quit that day. And that's the last they ever try it. Okay, that's, that's it, they're done with sugar. That, that, that happens maybe less than 10% actually, I would say. It didn't happen for me, and I don't know too many people that it happened. It does happen occasionally though. For most people, there's going to be a relapse, okay? There's going to be, you're gonna get a week in, a month in, a day in, whatever. You're gonna get a little time in, and then you're going to re-ingest by accident sometimes, but sometimes by, in a salad dressing or something like that. But in reality, most people will have a small or, or maybe purposeful or maybe a big relapse. And here's what I want you to look out for, especially if you get a week or a, two weeks or a month under your belt. Uh, what, I want you to, what I want you to see is I want you to see how, now again, this is going to sound very drug-like, how buzzed you are, how actual high you are, the euphoria, the raise in self-esteem that you will get from taking maybe a week or two weeks or a month off of sugar, which no doctor is going to stop you from doing. It's a very easy or very safe thing to do. It's not, there's no danger in it to stop sugar for, and then all of a sudden re-ingest. Just kind of remember, I want you to think about this, this part of the course. What happened when that happened? That you got that little buzz and you got that, like the buzz you had as a kid, the buzz that attracted you to it. Um, and the buzz that just became ubiquitous that you were chasing all day, every day. Um, so I want you to kind of think about that, remember, just kind of a side note anyway. So what are the things you're gonna to need to do this? Two things, right? You're gonna need information, which you're gonna give you in spades. I'm gonna bury, nobody's, well, I shouldn't say nobody, very few people are going to either watch all these videos or read this entire book, which is now approaching 100 pages, uh, very few people are going to uh, do all that work to get through this, okay? And you don't have to. I mean, I shouldn't say it that way, but I would like to see you do it because it's very valuable and we put a lot of time and effort in it, but a lot of people are not going to do it. So the information is key. It's important. It's all here if you want to go back and relook at it, whatever. A lot of times, as I mentioned, very few people just go for, like, the first time and then never ingest sugar again. Some people myself included, take a couple years to walk through this process, okay? It's a coming back and forth, coming back and forth, right? They'll go a week, a month, a year sometimes, and then all of a sudden they'll fall off the wagon and 
and gain 10 pounds right away, whatever. So the information is always going to be there for you. And the number two thing that's always going to be there for you too in the Facebook group, because you're part of this group, is that there's a private Facebook group. Now you can get on the regular Facebook if you're not private somehow, and this is down the line, this information gets out there somehow on YouTube or whatever, it does occasionally. Uh, you can go to the regular Facebook, but you need support, okay? You need other people moving in the same direction as you, who you can, you know, not, and I don't mean to say this in a bad way, folks, but I think you kind of probably got to this already. Not your friends, not your family, probably, uh, very likely not your work mates or what have you. This is going to be people who, like you, have come to the conclusion that they want flour and sugar to be eliminated from their life, okay? That they, it just has become a problem for them, either weight-wise or health-wise, diabetes, heart disease, whatever. Sugar has become, a, and, and, the, and, the, and the seemingly uh, overwhelming need to re-ingest day in and day out has become a problem. And you need help. You need someone, us, if you will, us, this uh, group of folks who are moving in that direction, who want that for you, okay? And we are there to support you. I mean, we are there in spades to support you. We have the, the Facebook group. We have, we'll have telephone numbers that you can call. Uh, you can hook up with different people. We'll, you'll match up with different people. Uh, possibly a mentor system will be in place by then. And you'll be able to talk to different people when you have um, these uh, cravings, if you will, have these anxieties. So please, take this information, take this support that we've given, and use it. We're here, to use, we're here for you to use that, okay? All right, we'll be back in just a few minutes. All right, so let's get into the day-to-day, -day, okay? Let's, let's plan your withdrawal. Let's plan your exit, if you will, okay? And this is going to be very specific, so... Well, you can see it in the book. It's in the book. Or you might want to take notes, just write a few things down, how, see how it works for you. I do want to have a quick caveat, a quick side note. Uh, we've talked a little bit about flour and, and sugar being analogous and being very similar. And some people, including myself, I'll be honest, uh, this is how I did it. I quit caffeine, and then I quit sugar, and then I quit flour. I did them separately. Okay, I'm honest. I uh, There were... Uh, it was harder, I think, I believe, because I worked with people who have done them all at the same time and it was easier. Um, but back then, I, there was no real even support groups, there was nothing really going on. So I was kind of flying blind and did it experimentally because the caffeine caused me an anxiety issue and then the sugar I knew was a problem and the flour. So it's been many years now since I've had any of those three. And what I want to stress right now is that uh, you're probably going to want to quit caffeine first. So if that's possible, you know, people have asked me about uh, a caffeine product or a caffeine uh, course so that we can walk through that. It seems like that is becoming an issue for a lot of people with the, with the prevalence of um, the sports, I'm not sports drinks, but uh, what do they call those? The caffeine drinks, the... Uh, power drinks, the, uh, I don't even know the name of them because I never drank them, but, um, uh, I can't remember the name of them, but you know what I'm talking about, the, the, the supercharged caffeine drinks. Um, so anyway, caffeine, I've seen this happen a couple of different times where people, uh, quit sugar and flour, but still ingest caffeine, black coffee, or what have you, uh, non-sweetened tea, and uh, it, it just ends badly, folks. It's not a good idea. That, I believe, and uh, you know, I haven't really studied it that much. I just I quit it many, many years ago. As you saw at the beginning of the story, it was my, the first thing I really discovered that was hurt, seemed to be uh, physically harming people. So you may want to think about quitting caffeine first because it's so tied together with uh, sodas and uh, chocolate and uh, and sugar in, in coffee and what have you. And the caffeine withdrawals, it, the main, one of the main reasons so that you can kind of see the separateness of the withdrawals and possibly, now you're not gonna believe that the sugar guy is gonna, be, is gonna say this, but you may need to use a little sugar to get through your caffeine withdrawals. 
uh, almost like medically assisted detox, if you will. Uh, but if that's not for you, I would suggest that sooner or later you think about caffeine in your diet. So uh, anyway, it's a side note. It's something I believe in. It's not something that's mandatory, but again, people who just use caffeine and don't have flour and sugar to buffer it, like a <laughs> ter terrible way to say this, but like a speed ball to balance out your, your, your going up with your going down with the sugar. Uh, anyway, you probably get that. You get that reference, but. So let's talk about the actual schedule, okay? The actual schedule to walk yourself out of this. Now, what you're gonna need here if you can't take one and a half weeks off and do this, then you gotta do it this way. You've gotta start your first day on a Thursday night or a Thursday late in the day, okay? If you work Monday through Friday, this is, okay? So you can schedule this if you work other times, right? And the first day is usually a grace day. You don't usually have too many issues the first day, so that would be Friday. You don't have too many days when you're quitting. Get a good night's sleep. Get your food. Now, obviously, you got to go out. You got to do that uh, clean out the house stuff. You don't want this stuff in the house, especially over a weekend. You don't want stuff that you could possibly access in the house, right? And that kind of goes without saying, and I think that's in another part of the course, but you've got to clean the house out, okay? So the house is completely cleaned, and you've got a weekend off where you don't have a lot to do. There's not a lot going on. You're going to be able to rest. So Friday, you can go to work, it's not a problem. You'll be able to, uh, uh, you won't get a headache till later in the day and probably very late in the day and possibly the next day. So it, it depends on your habit and how much you've got to flush out of your system, okay? So on Saturday, you're gonna rest. By Sunday, you're gonna be a ba basket case, another medical term. <laughs> you're gonna be a basket case. Uh, headaches, anxiety, uh, depression, uh, it's gonna be tough on the, on the third day, okay? But if you can rest most of the day and sleep most of the weekend, you know, rest over the weekend. Now, what I suggest right away that you incorporate in is walking or some type of exercise. Now, we're going to go over that in the exercise section, but it has nothing to do with losing weight or calories or sweating or burning, nothing like that. It's to help you begin a process of substituting a method of dealing with emotions, A, and uh, helping you heal quicker uh, with all of the, the feel-good dopamine receptors, everything, how, helping you f uh, heal quicker, okay? Okay, so now comes Monday morning, you're still going to be, you're, you're, the, the, a lot of the bulk of the physical withdrawals, now hopefully you're one of those persons that can take a week and a half off and you can, uh, you know, just kind of coast through this week without it. But if you've got to go back to work that Monday morning, uh, you gotta prepare, okay? You gotta be very prepared, both your, your lunch and if your dinner is necessary, whatever, uh, you gotta be prepared. But you've gotta, uh, you, you're, gonna, you're gonna have this overwhelm, especially when you get back into a little bit of the anxiety or the emotional, uh, you know, the playing, the, the, the emotional, uh, that's the right thing, the emotional environment that is work. Okay, that, that is always a little bit more stressful, sometimes, not always, but than home, than at home, okay? And so you've got to be prepared for this because you're going to be overwhelmingly hunger, hungry. I told you about the, uh, uh, the uh, what do you call it, the, uh, the growling of the stomach, the, uh, the, this, this ravenous hunger you're going to have for flour or sugar. It's all physical. It's not, I don't want to say it's not real because it's very real. Uh, but it's not something where you, you know, you, you have to have it, okay? So you want to be able to walk through the first few weeks, okay? You want to be able to walk through uh, the first week for sure, very guarded, very uh, aware. Um, and we're going to talk about journaling, writing this all down in just a minute. But uh, you want to be aware of the fact that, that sugar uh, is calling your name. It's sugar is trying to get re-ingested in the body. It's trying to keep the same habit going, right? So don't really, uh, don't try if you can to have a light week at work if that's possible, all right? And just try and get through the week, eat healthy at lunch, uh, rest well at night, take a walk at night or walk at lunchtime to help you uh, feel a little bit better emotionally, all right? 
and just keep walking through the withdrawals, okay? So this first week, this, this uh, either at work or at rest, is going to be a very important one, simply because everybody's uh, uh, everybody moving the sugar out of their body, their intestines, everything is, is a little bit uh, different. So everybody's going to come between days three and day seven. Uh, the, the things I just described are going to come at different times, possibly. And, and they come in waves. They don't just all hit you at once. They come in waves. They go up and down, whatever. The hunger, the anxiety, the depression, the lethargy, all that kind of stuff comes at different times during that first week or 14 days, 10, 10 12, 14 days. It's different for everyone, okay? These are m mostly physical symptoms, okay? Uh, when you get into the emotional symptoms, we'll get into in one second. I want to go over one thing quickly, but uh, it gets a little trickier. But one thing I did want to bring up is night sweats, okay? A lot of people, myself included, have night sweats when they begin to detox from sugar. Again, just like I told you before, to remember that buzz you got, uh, like if you get a week of abstinence or two weeks and then you re-ingest, uh, don't beat yourself up, don't worry about it, just start back when you can. But what will happen along with the little buzz is that evening and definitely during your withdrawals for a lot of people, there is night sweats. I think I've told you the story about my children never having the night sweats and my mother saying that I had it all the time. And then one day, that first day, they had it on their sixth birthday, or someone else's sixth birthday there. Uh, their head was soaking wet and so was their pillow that night. So night sweats are very real. Uh, a re very real withdrawal symptom of sugar addiction and not some dire illness that you've got to worry about, okay? It's just the withdrawal symptoms from sugar coming out of your body. So, the emotional stuff. This is where it gets a little tricky. And again, this will start for you anytime between days three and four and seven or eight, ten, like that. When you start to try and move towards a month of clean time, a month of uh, off of sugar and flour, okay? And what that is, is the, uh, um, it, it manifests at the beginning like, I just need a little something. Right? That's the mindset. That's your mind saying, I just need a little something. I need a little sugar in my body. I need a little, uh, um, a little bite of something, a little, little, little soda or something like that. But really, when we get into journaling, you're going to see it's like the boss was a pain in the butt. The kids are a nightmare right now. And I just need something to stop all these crazy thoughts and feelings that I've been dealing with by, in the past by ingesting sugar. Okay, so once you kind of get to that point, then you'll be, once you start to realize it through your journaling, you'll start to understand exactly how that works, okay? So when we're talking about kind of a very pivotal time, which is days 10 or 14 through whenever, what you need to think about is, you need to think about every time you have a quote unquote craving, take a look at your journal, write it down, and try and figure out what's really going on with me. Is there a boss? Is there a kid? Is there a wife? Is there a husband? Is there a spouse of some kind? Is there some kind of work problem? What, what is really going on with me uh, that I want to readjust? And then call someone or get on the Facebook group and find out, just, just lay it out to them. Tell them exactly what you're, you know, what you're going through. Most times, just the act of doing that will relieve the craving for sugar. Sound crazy? Again, just give me that little benefit of the doubt and let's get you to try that, all right? So again, what are we doing during this time period of days 10 or 14 through whenever? We are readjusting, we are recalibrating, relearning how to deal with emotions in ways that we hadn't learned before with sugar uh, when we had complete access and and kind of were unconsciously using sugar to do that. So we're substituting is what we're doing. We're substituting a walk. We're substituting yoga. We're substituting going on the Facebook group. We're substituting making a telephone call or whatever it is, drinking some water or getting a, um, a something healthy tea. Okay. All right. So that's it about through withdrawals. I want to stress before I go, 
on withdrawals that withdrawals are very, very serious physical ailments. A lot of people, and I'm sure, and you know, we have the disclaimers all over the site and all over the product and whatever, it's like, there are people that have it real true emotional or mental issues. But for the most part, for most people, withdrawals are primarily physical events that happen to blend into a, a weird emotional part that turns into cravings. Cravings is like what we call it, but it's not really physical cravings like you would crave food for sustenance. It's, it's the emotional need for your body to re-ingest to just stop what's going on for a minute, just to numb you out just for a second. And if you can carry that with you and journal about it, then I think you'll be able to walk your way out of that, okay? Anyway, if you have any questions, jump on the Facebook group and uh, let's, uh, let's get an answer. We'll talk to you in just a few minutes. Take care. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to download the free guide below and follow along. Just follow along in the series as the episodes are all clearly marked. If the next episode is not up yet, then make sure you subscribe so we can notify you when it drops.